As you can imagine, over the years, I get all kinds of comments on my videos. And whenever I do these talks about writing tips, I typically get several people who want to tell me how hard they ride. And I have to be honest with you, when they do this, I'm never quite sure exactly what they mean. Nor am I sure if that's something we should even be striving for. Now, of course, I've been on rides that have truly been hard. That is, they were a struggle or very tiring to complete. Typically, that has been associated with an off-road route that required a lot of physical stamina to maneuver the bike, or maybe we had to stop and pick up a lot of dropped bikes along the way. These kinds of days are indeed hard and exhausting. But I'm pretty sure that when people tell me that they ride hard, that's not the kind of riding they're talking about. I think what they're really saying is that they ride fast, they push their bike down until the floorboards drag and throw sparks, and they're on the butt-puckering edge of disaster. Now this kind of riding, of course, gets your heart beating, your blood pumping, adrenaline flowing, and it makes you feel alive. But is it really the best way to ride a motorcycle? Should we really be worried about riding hard, or should we be trying to ride smoothly? Look, I am not the best rider in the world. I am a good rider, but not an expert rider. These guys are the experts, and I've learned from listening to them that keeping on the gas and pushing a bike down until it scrapes the ground is not the smartest or the fastest way to take a corner. Rather, it is a combination of reading the corner, picking the proper line, adjusting for the entry speed, carrying your brakes past the point of tip-in, and then trailing off as you add throttle to exit and accelerate. When done properly, all of this happens easily and effortlessly as you become one with the bike. As Ken Condon, motorcycle trainer and author of Riding in the Zone, has said, when done properly, the motorcycle is your dance partner that you lead and move with to create art. I know this sounds very romantic and not consistent with a standard image of tough, burly bikers, but we have all experienced this in one form or another in our lives, at least if you have played some kind of sport. For me, this feeling of effortless flow has not only occurred while riding my bike, but also while performing kata at a martial arts tournament, playing baseball, riding a bicycle, and catching a perfectly timed pass during a football game. Of course, there have also been times when playing and riding has been a struggle. During these experiences, no matter how hard I tried, no matter how much I concentrated, I just could not get things to work right. It is paradoxical but true that when you try the hardest, that is when results just don't come. Rather, when you let go and just let things happen, that is when the moments of oneness and perfection reveal themselves. Now, of course, the road that leads to these metaphysical experiences travels through many miles of learning and practice. When I swing a leg over my bike, I say to myself, time for some practice. Literally every mile and every corner is an opportunity to practice, to get better, to be smoother. As I said, I am not the best rider out there. Far from it. I make mistakes all of the time. Sometimes I misjudge my corner entry speed or where I think the exit or apex of a curve will be and need to make corrections. That is why I try to recognize and never ride above my personal skill level. For me, that means that I strive to always be within 50 to 60% of my capabilities. I always want plenty left in the tank, just in case something unforeseen happens. We all know that if you ride long enough, you will have an encounter with the deer. Yep, I've been there. Or maybe an errant trash truck lurking around a blind corner. Yep, I have done that. Or a guy in a Jeep passing when they should not be. Yep, I've done that too. In all of these cases and many more, I was able to avoid the accident because I was riding within my abilities and able to respond appropriately. Now, of course, I love a spirited ride as much as anybody. But when something happens like we were just talking about, what are you going to do if you, yourself, or the bike has been pushed to its limits? Where do you go when you need that little something extra 
to avoid disaster. Now, of course, I get it. We motorcyclists are part daredevil with egos the size of a V-twin engine. We don't like to think of ourselves as vulnerable or lacking in skill or determination. However, just twist the throttle and send it is not a good long-term survival strategy. As we get older, as I am and most of my viewers are, if we want to continue enjoying our saddle time, we need to stop letting our egos get the best of us. Rather than riding harder, it is time to ride smarter and smoother. So how do you do this? How do you become a smoother, smarter rider? As I have said, I am not an expert. I learn from the experts. But here are a few things that I have learned that have helped me to become a better rider. Develop the mindset that every ride is practice. There is always more to learn and you can always get better. Have fun, but put your egos aside. Don't bow to peer pressure. If other riders are doing things that you are not comfortable with, well then leave. Ride your own ride. When I started striving to become a better rider, I used to think myself around every corner. In my mind, I would go through the steps necessary to perfectly execute every bend in the road. I read the corner, decided where I wanted to position myself, modulated my speed accordingly, trail braked as needed. I then looked for the exit and got back on the throttle when it was okay to straighten up the motorcycle. I used to do this on every turn, and you know what? I still do it today, about a decade later. In our MSF basic rider courses, we are taught that you should never use the brake and throttle at the same time. Slow, look, press and roll is the mantra. And of course, there are good reasons this is taught to beginning riders. However, if you want to be a better, smoother rider, then I think learning to properly control your motorcycle by coupling the brakes and throttle is the single most important skill you can master. That is, after situational awareness and not being an idiot. Commonly, this coupling of the brake and throttle when negotiating a corner is called trail braking. The idea is that as you approach a corner, you roll off the throttle at the same time, you are progressively applying the brakes, both of them on the street. There should be an overlap of brake and throttle, which does require practice to master. As I approach the corner before I reduce throttle, I start squeezing the brakes. Again, I use both brakes, but I am showing the front brake here, because it takes time and skill to figure out. Once I have established brake pressure, I then start to roll off the throttle at the same time I am adding more brake. I do this until I feel that I have the proper entry speed for the corner. At tip in, I carry the brakes into the turn, but now I start to slowly trail off the brakes and either maintain or progressively add throttle, but never abruptly. Once you have identified the exit of the turn, you should be completely off the brakes and slowly adding throttle until you can straighten the bike and head out with a grin. Do you need to trail brake for every corner? No, there are some turns that require only a roll off of the throttle, but at least for me in every corner that requires braking, I am trail braking. The degree of brake pressure and throttle overlap varies for the situation. Another skill you need to master in order to be a smoother rider is learning to read the corner. When you first try this, like any new skill, it will be difficult to get right the first time. At least it was for me. But now that I've been doing it for many years, I would say that eight to nine times out of 10, I get it right. The idea is using visual clues to help create a picture in your mind's eye of the corner. In particular, you want to estimate the apex or exit of the turn so that you can adjust speed and trajectory as required. Now, primarily, I look for the vanishing point of each corner. Is that point wide or narrow? If wide, I expect a more gradual curve. On the other hand, if it narrows or disappears quickly, or I can't see it at all, I estimate that it is going to be a tighter turn, requiring more slowing. Again, this is a skill that just takes practice. All of these skills, of course, work together to successfully navigate a twisty road. Along with reading the corner and having good trail braking skills, picking your line can also be extremely important. 
It is possible to safely get around a corner by sticking to the standard middle, middle, middle approach if you brake ahead of time and simply slow down as taught in the MSF classes. However, if you want to, as we are talking about in this video, become a better rider, choose the optimal cornering line that will not only keep you safer, but allow you to be a faster rider. Simply put, the idea is to take a line that delays your turn in so that you can better point yourself up the road toward the exit and keeping away from traffic. To accomplish this, I start my turn as wide as safely possible while staying in my lane. I say this because if there is oncoming traffic or other road hazards, I would need to slow down more and move away from the danger. If it is safe, starting wide allows me to see further up the road and combined with my reading of the corner, point the bike toward the exit. The last skill we will cover is body position. At high speeds, such as on the track, body position is very important. But for normal street riding, well, not so much. Yes, it can aid in traversing a corner without scraping those hard parts we were talking about earlier, but the benefit is limited. We all know that to initiate lean and turn a motorcycle, we need to counter steer. In the MSF parking lot courses, we are taught to go right, you push right. And since we are traveling at relatively slow speeds, we need to counterweight the motorcycle, keeping our bodies upright as the bike leans underneath us. Many riders use this same technique when riding a twisty road, especially those of us on large, heavy cruisers with feet forward riding positions. We commonly enter a corner and just push the bike as low as we can until we exhaust the already limited lean angle. Of course, this is not the optimal approach. What I do, rather than keeping my body completely upright, is to move my head and shoulders toward the direction of travel. Under most street riding conditions, it is not necessary to hang off the bike, but moving slightly in the direction of travel enables me to keep the bike more upright as I make the turn. The lean angle you recover might be small, but even an inch can be the difference between making a turn safely and not. While riding my Triumph Tiger adventure bike, positioning myself for a turn is pretty easy. But riding my Victory Vision, it was a bit more complicated. Sitting with a straight body and a feet forward riding posture, well, that does not make it very easy. To better move on the bike, I would move my feet to the rear of the floorboards and lean my body forward in order to more easily allow this kind of motion. Again, it just takes practice. Now, of course, I have just touched on the things that you need to learn and work on in order to become a better, smoother rider. There is a lot more to learn. Now, I will list some of the sources that I go to in the description of this video. So if you're interested in digging deeper, well, check those out. So in review, being a good motorcyclist like any sporting activity is not about riding or playing hard or about having the biggest balls. Becoming better at anything is about slow, diligent practice and improvement. Learn to ride smoother, smarter, and not harder. All right, guys, continue to ride safe out there and keep squeezing your lemon.